It's time for ignition and straight up automobile pimping. Dude, where's my car? Dude, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another installment of the Dude, Where's My Car podcast. I am your host, Tom, and I've got my lovely work co-owner, husband, man of steel, (laughs) master of the Shaolin, Tony Hong. Tony, how are you, bro? I'm great. How are you? I'm fucking good, bro. I know. We're excited. (laughs) (laughs) I am excited. I got a fucking... We got a sick guest on today. Yep. In between us, the cream of the crop, uh, as as always, I like doing the podcast this way, bro. I, I, I love sitting next to you, but this was this was really good. I enjoy this way. Sitting in between us, I have an absolute legend. Yep. He appeared out of nowhere like an angel, and all of a sudden, we are blessed with some of Sydney's greatest events today. And I have no one else other than Ken from Point Zero Garage, brother. How are you? Brilliant, now that I'm sitting at this table with two incredible legends. <laughs> but before we start, round of applause for you guys. For doing this. <laughs> this guy's ready Stop for it. it. Stop <laughs> it. I hope he gives us some shit, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm keen, I'm keen. Oh. I feel like there's like a little bit of aggression to you, bro. I like it. I can understand how, I'm keen to understand a little bit more about how Point Zero Garage started in the first place. But honestly, just having speaking to you at pre- previous events and on social media and now just having a bit of a yarn with you over dinner, man, I, I just, you remind me of a really good friend of mine and I don't want to say his name, but like you just have this drive about you, man. And it's special. I can feel it. It's like this little magical energy around you. Your mate, if he's anything like me, he's a top bloke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hope he's listening. Uh, <laughs> watch the podcast. <laughs> Bro. Thank you so much for coming on to this podcast, man. It means a lot to us. Thank you for inviting me. We've been talking about this now for a little while, and like this was this was bound to happen, eh? Of like, course, of course. I oh yes. Um, can I just say something that happened to me on the way down to the studio today? It's been it's been gone in my gears, and I've been thinking about starting a little segment on the potty, just about things that grind my gears on my drives <laughs> to Sydney. <laughs> Now, I've got this little segment that I want to bring up called Cars That You Would Personally Drive Into a Brick Wall. Now, I'm not the biggest fan. (laughs) I'm not the biggest fan of the Discovery. In particular, the Discovery 3 or 5. Now, I think these vehicles are notoriously known for breaking down, and I'm not just attacking one year model. I'm attacking all of the year models. Sorry if you own one as a daily. And sorry to everyone tuning in, but I just, look, I think it's like one of the most unreliable cars ever. And on my drive down here today, I was like, why is this guy not getting out of the right lane? He's blocking me from getting here. I've got to be fast. Ken from Point Zero Garage is going to be here. He's already beating me on time. I can't have that. And as I come down, he has this finally come on. Smoke comes billowing out of his engine bay. And I was like, honestly, I was just like, you know what? I'd expect nothing less (laughs) from a fucking discovery. I'm sorry, <laughs> shittest car that has ever been made. It's up there with the Jags. It's up there. <laughs> <laughs> but it just made me think, are there cars that you would personally drive into a brick wall? Just the, And for whatever reason, it could be unreliable. It could be just a car that you just generally don't like the look of. Is there a car that you're like, why is this a thing? God damn Prius. <laughs> <laughs> that thing, one, apart from being atrocious, so are their drivers. Yep. So is... I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> We've given some shit about electric vehicles, haven't we, Tony? Oh, right. If you talk to us, we fucking hate, hate them. <laughs> hate the living crap out of them. Fun fact. <laughs> Had a bank sales call up saying we give you like a um, commercial loan if you want to buy cars, this and that. Had old man yeah. on the phone. He doesn't. He hates the phone. He was like, yeah, so everyone's very into like the new electric vehicles. Old man's like, don't fucking talk to me about electric vehicles. I fucking hate them. If you're going to talk about electric, hang up now. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. We're talking about fuel. We're talking about fuel. He's like, none of that. 
a once a math truck type. It's like, uh, okay, now we okay. can talk. Send us more details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Electric, get that shit out of oh, here. Of course, of course. <laughs> oh, actually, how do you feel about the hybrids in general? Like the hybrid supercars and stuff that I kind of understand. Prius is a hybrid. I know that. <laughs> I know that. But I'm talking about yeah. like the limitless gear change, yeah. like just the endless power of like a Porsche or a McLaren or anything like that. In that aspect, yeah. yes, I'll support that. I'll back that 100%. Mm. All right. But you talk about your street cars? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Just leave it to what we've been t- like dealing with for how many years now? Yeah, true. True, true. They don't, diesel, that's it. they don't win many races, Priuses, do they? <laughs> you don't win the longevity race. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I miss the days of the NSXs. Now we get these Honda EVs. I had one coming to my work the other day. No. Putting a bike rack on. It is ugly. It is ugly. Is that the weird thing with like the circle eyes on it? Like those new Honda? I swear to God, I saw an all electric Honda and it was like the cubiest looking weird thing I've ever seen. There's an EV of it? Yeah. Brilliant. The hybrid? It was a hybrid that came in. That? No, I'm just staying oh, right away from it. Yeah, I'm like, I... And if you guys know me, I'm a big Honda fan. <laughs> 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 My baby, she's stuck in the driveway, but that's a Honda thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's like cred. That's, yeah, it's meant to happen. <laughs> All right, Ken. Something we love to do before we dive into anything other than grind my gears now, apparently. But we want to know a little bit more about you. We want to know about, I guess, who are you? Where'd you come from? What do you do? Run me through it, man. Okay. What do you drive? Who are you? Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome to our podcast (laughs) you're here with the latest um one time only host ken (laughs) love it so he was practicing on the live last night (laughs) (laughs) um founder and director of point zero garage started last year but let's go back before we go into the brand let's go back about me yeah before i got into a relationship which lovely i love my partner future wife (laughs) Um, I was into my fitness a lot before a back injury and everything like that happens to slip discs all the time. Right. I was into a bit of the Aussie modeling scene. So I was working with Aussie gym wear brands, um, streetwear brands on that side of things on my personal account. Mm-hmm. I've always had a love for this industry. Right. Um, and I wanted to start a business in active wear to begin with, mm-hmm. but it's an overly saturated market. Right, it's nuts. Yeah. So you're not really too keen on going up against Lilliman. <laughs> Is that how you say it? Lilliman. 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 Yeah. <laughs> um, no, we don't talk about Lilliman. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so now I left that. And I'm like, what else do I want to do? Fell in love with. Well, actually, no. I've grown up around cars. Um, Dad's had from Cortinas, Gemini's, Skylines. Um, VLs, Pulsars. I've grown up around it all my life. Mm. Now, that was something that had a big influence on me growing up. Um, I thank my dad for that. He's always... we had. Do you guys remember Orange Grove? They still do it now, but it's nothing like the old days. Uh, Liverpool KK, so Orange Grove. Yep. When it was the last weekend of every month, they do the big meets. Yep. I was going since I was like five, six. Right? Dad would take me. <laughs> so, OG. Car scene, OG. That was, that was when it was real. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, now, you see all these other brands and other groups and other clubs that are trying to do the same thing as me. Um, we're all doing the same thing where we want to bring the community together. All right? And that's what that's how Point Zero started. All right? April 19th last year, so 2023. So not even a year yet. And blessed with all the support that that's gotten so far. Almost at 2,100 followers on Instagram. Um, great amount of support online on the website. And everything that's come through with it. Right? All the connections that we've made together. Right? The bonds, the friendships. Right? Something that we always aim to work together to grow in Sydney and in Australia. Yeah. Uh, Point Zero our Garage started with the influence of my girlfriend. She started her own brand at the time. Mm-hmm. And it was that push that I needed to go my own way and do what I wanted to do. Now we were talking for a while, and she's like, "Why don't you uh, do? Why don't you make a name that resembles you?" Right? 
like my background, my culture being Greek. She's like, why don't you try something like Adonis or the Moses or something? And I'm like, it just does not sit right with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we were going back and forth for a couple of days. And then she, to be honest, she did not like point zero in the beginning. Mm. She goes, why? I'm like, just let me try it. Threw it up on the gram, did a poll. Everyone loved it out of the three options. So we had the Adonis Automotive. There was another wind up. Irrelevant now. <laughs> it didn't make us a chance. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> yep. And point zero. Right. So that definitely was a success. Mm-hmm. And now with the support of my girlfriend, um, you guys can see she's running the stalls and everything at the meets. Brilliant work. Mm. Yeah. So I've got good relationships with other brands and other businesses around Australia now. Um, next step is to expand worldwide, internationally. Um, but right now, it's getting this down pat here. Yeah. And that's why we're here tonight. 100%, bro. Well, well let's see if we can help you a little bit further. <laughs> 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 no, man, that's, that's – honestly, that's a fascinating – in the sense of like, I love drive. I love people with passion. I love people who say it how it is. Mm. And I also love the fact that this is like, again, not saying it's whimsical, the fact that it's so young and fresh and you're here and you've got exponential growth happening. Mm. And like, you can see in your face, man, like you're smiling. Like you love what you're doing. Of course, 100%. This doesn't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. This is like, you, we, we all know at this table, right? It's, even our producer knows. It's hustle and grind every single every, day. No, 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 day, every single second. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch breaks at work. All right, you're working on the brand. Toilet breaks, you're working on the brand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the way home, before you start driving, focus on the roads. All right, working on the brand. Get home, working on the brand. It just doesn't yeah. stop. Does not stop. Yeah, I'm getting bad to voice to text now. Uh, so now whilst driving, it's like, but it doesn't make any sense. So I'll be talking in group chats and they're like, fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, oh, can't get my point across. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's a that's really cool introduction, man. I want to take a little bit of a step back. I don't know about you, Tony, but you mentioned something very cool about the OG days. Yeah. I want to know a little bit more about that and why maybe influence you to love Hondas the way you do. Maybe there was another brand there that you love that you now hate. Like, I don't know. Like, it might have turned you off because you're like, oh, I wanted it so bad. You got it. And then you're like, oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when I grew up in Mexico, uh, I was going sideways in the streets with, with an uncle of mine uh, who's connected to a racing team, All right, which... It's in Mexico, so we don't know the names here in the race in Australia. Mm. It's all right. Don't yeah. worry about it. All right. From that very moment, that's when I fell in love with cars. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. I had my dad in the back, right, in the skyline in Mexico once again, all right, uh, while I was in the VL. All right. <sighs> Dose hard. Pearl white. All right. <sighs> Never that. Yeah. But that was, yeah, that was the moment I knew I wanted to do this, all right, and- Growing up, being around cars, my Honda is actually my first car still. Right? So what? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> right? How? <laughs> the Honda that's the first car doesn't get driven anymore, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I I built a Instagram page before I did Point Zero, which a lot of people knew me from there and brought over, uh, which was O Four Herb. And that was just my journal, basically. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, okay, I just got my close friends, 100 followers on it, you know, nothing special, right? Didn't think I was going to get anywhere. And that was just uh, doing all these different little little bits and pieces, little upgrades, DIYs to the car from home, mm-hmm. all right? From there, that's I'm like, okay, the Honda is staying, all right? When, even though it was the first car, we're not getting rid of that, all right? That stays, even if it's on the side, all right? In the future, we'll get another car, all right? Project. Uh, and from there, just, yeah, that's how we are now. I want to take another step back. <laughs> I want to go way back. I want to go way back. <laughs> way back. How did you get into Honda? Why was it that Honda? And why was it an Accord? Not anything else. <laughs> Fair Nothing question. against them. I love them. <laughs> it was supposed to be a Mazda 3. That was supposed to be the first P-Play car. All okay, right, yeah. All right. All right. The Accord came along. Leather seats. It's a luxury, by the way. Yep. Leather seats, sunroof, electric seats, seat warmers. Yeah. Potential. 
right. <laughs> 2.4 later. 2.4 later. Fluffy dice. Check. Right. <laughs> have the comfort there. Have a 2.4 later. Okay. We're working with best of both worlds here. Yeah. All right. So I got the I got the Honda when I was on my L's. All right. That was just gonna be, oh, you learn on it, all right? Get sack rid of it, it off. Sack yeah. it off. Yeah. I got into the car scene there, all right. Can I share can I say a name? Yeah. Like a car yeah, car, a car group? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Oz Euro. Honda yep. Oz Euro. Yeah. That's where I learned everything for what I knew for what I needed to know in order to get the Honda where I wanted it. All right, that's where I built all the connections, got the tunes, got everything done, right? Yeah, man. Um, that's why body kits, everything, right? That's why the Honda is how it is now. If it wasn't for Oz Euro page, it wouldn't be anywhere near that. Fair enough. Mad. What, that connection though, like just out of the blue, like how... Really? That Honda just popped up on, what would it be back in the day? What, Gumtree? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, car sales, trading post. <laughs> Marketplace. All the, all the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> How old do you think I am, man? <laughs> yeah, nah. Time's flying, you know? I don't know. <laughs> oh, nah, bro, bro, it, was, word, it was a Marketplace special. Word of mouth. You wouldn't believe it. You just talk to people. Next door's neighbor's farm car. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you were saying, where, where was it on? No, it was a marketplace one. Yeah. We drove all around Sydney yeah. just to find this thing in the next suburb. <laughs> in the next suburb, all right? It was just That's a family Close car. Close to home. That's it was just a family car at the time, all right? Now, the bug got sold it to me. It was like, what's this bastard done to it now? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nah, she's kicking strong. What's done? Like, what is done to it now? Okay. Have we got stages of mods? You could say so. Yeah, all right. Let's go all stage right. one. Let's let's do it. Stage one, the most awful. Not mods, just little touches, right? The L plane mod, or was it the P plane? <laughs> 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 the atrocious rims that first came. Okay, tell oh, me about it. That was the biggest regret. That was the biggest regret. They were heavy. They didn't look good. They were crappy reps. Yeah. You know, and they were just like, just get them out of here. So I had them for maybe about two months, three months, hated them, left them, sold them off, lost a bit of money on them, but who cares, all right? And then we moved into the Lenzos. Lenzos, still keeping it, Aussie spec, um, which I've still got them now, fall in love with them. They've got a chrome lip with gold um, 38 offset, all right? Concave look to it, mm. all right? Nice sporty look. Mm -hmm. And then... That was, so that was that initial regret of the first rims. <laughs> Fixed. Body kits. Body kits. If you look at my car, it's a bit of a mix and match, but it's exactly how I like it. We're talking yeah. about different colored yeah. panels or? No, no, no. <laughs> We're talking about, if you know Hondas, we've got Mugen back, Mugen front. Yeah. Modulo Ooh. size goods. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. I'm All right. picking up what you're putting down. Now, Mugen, basically with Mugen side skirts, they flare out in the back, come in, flare out in the front. With Modulo, they flare out at the back, come in, all right, and they're a little bit straight in the front. <laughs> all right? But it's not, like, very noticeable. Mm -hmm. So you'd think that you could just get away with it all completely. Yeah. All right? So we've done that. The regret was <laughs> the, paint fade, the paint fade. The paint fade. right? Oh. <laughs> so I got it re-sprayed, all right? Brand new and everything. But if you look in the sun, it's a bit off colour. So because of brand new fresh coat of paint, right, the whole car wasn't done at once. It was body kit done. And uh -huh. Okay, yep, yep. I'm with you. <clears throat> yep. Now, at the moment, it's currently like that. It's going to go get detailed by my new partner that's getting announced this week right, for detailing. Bad. Um, it's, so not the, it's not the goat, is it? Which, ah. <laughs> which goat? What do you mean? <laughs> the goat. I swear to God, I wasn't listening to the live. I, I, I put his rooftop box on for him. Really? Hmm. It's dope. When I think I met you is when I first met you. The first met time him. we met you. At my meeting in November. Yeah. In the park. November or December? Yeah. No, that's the November one. That was the private invite only one. Do you know what's so weird about that? That, so that weekend when we went out to that event, mm. we said hello to you, him, I had like just a brief chat to him because I, I was making fun of the signage on the side because it's like goat detailing, greatest <laughs> of all time detailing. I was like, this guy's got it. <laughs> this guy's on it. No shit. 
The next day, you think you just never see someone again? Yeah, same. He's at fucking pro speed. <laughs> He's legit, and he's picking up, I can't remember what he picked up, but he's legit picked up stuff. And I was like, dude, it's me from yesterday. And he's, like, he's like, oh, what? And I was just like, what are the chances? So thank you for that. It was good. Turns out he buys parts of this. So I was like, mad. I saw the roof rack that you did. So yeah, that th- so that that yeah. thing with the box on the top, yeah, yeah. which I always reminds me of cars around Bayview. I don't know if you know where Bayview is, yeah. but it's around here in the northern beaches. I swear to God, all the golfs and the BMWs and stuff have that pod that's on the top. Sorry, goat, but it's a very big soccer mum thing. Yes, is it? Yes, yes. Thing, yeah. that's it. That's it's exactly a soccer mum thing. <laughs> but at my work, the soccer mums come and get it done, but their husband sent them. Yeah, so it's like okay, my husband's called up. He wants this, this, this. But it's going on my car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's because I told the husband last night, I want all this shit oh, done. No, no. <laughs> and I don't cheap out. <laughs> and don't cheap out. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Yeah, good job. That, that was nice. That day, I actually met Midnight JDM Car Import. Really? And that's where the last meet was in January. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. March. I'm getting my months mixed up. March, March, March. yeah. This, it was this month. Yeah. Last week, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, it's not April. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, which you guys tell me, was that a success or what? It was a great event. We were a bit late to it because we were at another one. The <laughs> yeah, that was hour my bad. before. Yeah. That was my up bad. the coast. <laughs> um, but no, it was a great event. Great, heaps of cars turned up. I know a couple of cars were leaving as we were turning up, mm. but it was good. We got that spot in the end. So I've noticed that with my meets lately. In the beginning, it started with quantity. Now, yeah. from that meet was a very big key reflection of quality over quantity. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, in saying that, that was also, to be fair, it was a smaller venue. Right? The December charity meet had more people attend with high quality cars as well. But this one, maybe because it was smaller, the environment felt more closer. It felt more, gave it more of an oomph to it. Mm. Okay. Could you feel that energy? Me? Yeah. This one. Oh, yeah. As soon as I walked into the showroom, it was like focused on cars, but the people around that you just get to talk with, people see you, they've seen you around, they've seen us, they've seen us at previous points of garage events. Yeah. People just link up. It's like, like you're saying, it's a smaller group. Yeah. You might have not talked to them before, but you've seen them. You've yeah. seen their cars around. So it's like, there's an opportunity and things just link. And this is the beauty of social media, right? Because... Back in the days, they didn't have social media, right? So Mm. they didn't have like the platforms Mm. that we can take so much advantage of these days. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, I don't need to physically know you, right, in person to know you. Right, I know of you. Oh, that's this and this person's car. All right. Oh, I know this person through Instagram, through TikTok, Mm. through Facebook, through whatever. Yeah. All right. That's what makes these events so much more fun these days as well. Yeah, for sure. And then that's how you build friendships. Okay, I've seen your stuff from here. I have this and this to talk to you about, right? And I can hold a conversation yeah. with you. True? Yeah, I'll very true. You oh. don't physically have to participate in it because it's all broadcasted everywhere. It's yeah. It's just so easy to be part of something that if you're too busy or you couldn't get to, yeah, there's always another space that you could look at it. What I will say with that though, is it takes a unique type of person to be able to form those bonds and relationships and actually action something like that. You being one of those key people, and I guess I'll selfishly speak about myself too, Tony would, I assure, agree, uh, and speak on behalf behalf of himself. My point is, is that I knew no one in this room Mm. a few years ago. I didn't, every single person I've started Car Culture Australia with I have no idea who they were until this started. Yep. I'm old as fuck, but like... <laughs> <laughs> He's the old one in the room. <laughs> but at the same time, like that sort of just goes to show you that it takes like those key moments mm. and that passion and the... And thankfully, like the awesomeness of social media, like you say, yeah. to hook that around and be able to make something so fucking blessing good yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like and sharing that yeah. what i hope off the back of that is that it continues on this trajectory yeah. that's what that's what i'm after now because when i see you do when i see you make what you make all i'm thinking in my head is like empower this dude and empower people like you to continue to put on those events you have to keep going mainly because we want to be there but at the same, <laughs> at the, but at the same time 
that is what's going to generate this trajectory going up. That's what's going to not let cars die. That is what's going to keep this driving and give people purpose and place Mm -hmm. and feeling and camaraderie. It's awesome, man. Like that. And please don't ever stop. So I, I, I'm, we can talk about later, obviously, but I just want you to don't, don't quit. Do I give you bad news? You're quitting. (laughs) (laughs) Not enough time. Yeah. (laughs) No, I, I am taking a step back from hosting yeah. yeah. in the respect and the aspect as well that I'm going to be helping other brands uh, collab, collab, uh, collab with them mm. for their own meets. Mm-hmm. So as a vendor, helping out, sponsor, instead of me hosting my meets, I'm going to still be in the community and in the scene as point zero, helping others. Yeah, so if, so if it's not me doing it, it's me helping others do it. Man, That's what we love. So, yeah. Yeah. That's another thing, right? For all these brands, don't be scared to reach out and help others. Don't be scared to talk to other brands. Yes, right? yes. Look at the incredible work that you two are doing, right? The whole team are doing. Stop it, right? Bro. Stop it. No, but seriously, like, <laughs> <laughs> we were chatting earlier, right? Yeah, we're all brands trying to aim for the same thing of helping the community, bringing everyone together. But us leaders and us owners and directors, we don't really talk to as many other brands as we should, right? That's where you guys come in. That's where I'll let you guys announce what you're going to later, <laughs> <laughs> which we're all very, very excited about. Yeah. Um, but if it wasn't for the help of you guys, you wouldn't help us help the community, if that makes sense. Well, I'm glad you see it that way, bro. Um, yeah. That means a lot. Thank you. I appreciate that because inevitably that's just what we're trying to do, like in the long run, in the yeah. grand scheme of things. Like that's all it is. This is just a media platform to boast about stuff happening in the country of Australia. Like that's really like, and I guess talk a whole bunch of nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do you agree with that? Sure. I agree. It's like one of the, our missions is connecting everyone who's, yeah. when we started this, it was like uh, one of the main things it's like, I don't know if we say like beef, but there's like clubs are against clubs. It's like conflict and conflict. Right. We don't like yeah. you. You're a competitor. We're not in the same thing. You do your thing. I do my thing. But it's like, it's all about cars. The love is all there. It's all fucking things on four wheels. I we don't talk about the two. I want to add something to that. All right, go. go. Did you notice that there wasn't something at the last meet that I had? The first one for 2024? There wasn't something. Quiz dad. Do, 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 there do. was not. Yeah, TikTok. Put on the time watch. Five. Wait, 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 wait. Can I, pick can, me, pick me, pick me. <laughs> can we treat it like who wants to be a millionaire? Can we phone a friend? <laughs> hey, the friend is the producer. Dan? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what did you say? There was, was not it? a show and shine. <laughs> there wasn't a show and shine for one reason. Show and shines, although they're great, right, in moderation, they bring a lot of competitiveness, mm. right? Yeah. Now, there's nothing to say that we can't all showcase our cars together without having that competition every single meet. Mm. What's going to change from one week to another with every car, right? So why are we going to go up against each other, right, and be like, okay, my car's better than yours. That's not what it's about. Yeah. All right? Look at what you guys do. Right, respect everyone's builds, which is what I stand for as well. Right, and a lot of other brands do. Um, but having some meets without a show and shine allows a community to really get together and hang out with each other and just embrace the cars rather than competition. So, well said. It is. I feel like that's probably why we get along so well is because we share the dream. Right, yeah. we share we share the vision. The bigger pictures, we've got that in vision. Yeah. And we know how to plan around it. Yeah. I'm just really impatient. <laughs> <laughs> like I said to you at dinner, like I, I, there's a million things I want to do now. We're just too much in our infancy to bring it out. And I'm like, but I just want to do it now. Yeah. And, but you can't. And I'm like, whoa. But you got to think about the bigger picture. If I bring it out now, <laughs> it could have been so, something so much more better uh, then. I know. Yeah. So. I know. You see this guy is like pulling. He's like, I'll come up with a great idea. He pulls the reins. He's just, he's just like, no, 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 you can't, you can't do that. And then out of nowhere, conf- complete conflicting view goes. I have this great idea, and I'm like, 
no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no we're, not, we're, not, we're not ready. <laughs> but that's the other thing. Who's to say when you're ready? Oh. <laughs> Just doing it out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's why we said to you before, like, that's why this came out, I guess, because Tony and I weren't going to release the potty for ages because we just yeah. wanted this backlog yeah. of stuff. Um, and then we were forced by our own team. Uh, to director Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's led to some great things because, honestly, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Yeah. I mean, we'd be having conversations, but we wouldn't be in this room Not right now. Room. On the podcast now. <laughs> But do you think, like, what do you think the biggest challenge is, like, today in cars? You can make that about yourself or just in general about the scene. Elaborate. I want to hear from two. One from you running, like, car events, shows, mm. meets, show and shines, mm. and from you overlooking the whole entire car scene to how it's differed, changed, gone shit or worse mm. from, gone bad from where the car scene you brought you were brought up with. Yeah, okay. Um that was a lot in one. <laughs> that was like three. <laughs> Let's answer the first part, okay? Yeah, yeah. So Part one. Part one. Right, is on oh, motivation. Here we go. This is what we always need. <laughs> His teleprompter scripts coming up. <laughs> okay. Um basically starting like running your own events. Yeah. The hardest thing is starting. One, mm -hmm. right? You have all these ideas, but you don't know where to start, right? So it is does come down to just journaling, just jot it down, right? From there, go back, look at it a couple of days later, look at it a couple of days again, right? There's so many mistakes that I made in the first one, second one, <laughs> um, that I have gone back and fixed in the last few, right? Um, basically... I noticed that you can't do everything on your own. Mm. Right? Oh. <laughs> 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 and yeah. the December fundraiser Christmas charity meet. Yep. It's everything on my own. Yeah. Right. So three, four hours, right, I'll sleep every night, get up, go to work, right, every day, full time. And it was just draining. Mm -hmm. Right. Three weeks. Right, you just put your all into it, and it's so rewarding when you put your all into it. And it, on the day, right, this big thing comes to life. Yeah, it pays off. Right, it really pays off. Um, which, a bit more context into the Christmas one, we raised eighteen hundred for Starlight Children's Foundation. Fuck yeah, dude! Well done. Fuck yeah. And close to two grand's worth of toys that has been donated to children's hospitals. Man, oh. put it up there again, bro. Let's do it again. <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> huge props to you for doing that because, yeah, it was before Christmas last year as well. I was talking to the temple and I was like, that is something that I really want to do. Yeah. Mm. But it came down to the point, like we're saying, we're not ready for it. We didn't have enough planning. Like we had too mm. much on the plate. But with you, you were saying what? You started April last year. Yeah. So what, eight months and you're running something like that. Mm -hmm. Fuck! Thank you. I tip my hat Congratulations, off to you, sir. Bro. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was also my first time doing a show and shine. Yeah. The money that people usually charge for show and shines, that went back into the money for Starlight. Oh man! Right. So none of it was all for, like it was for profit at all. The only bit that was profit was what. My missus did do at the store, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Merch, for the brand, yeah, yeah. merch. So as normal, mm -hmm. right? No vendor fees. I had a lot. Like I had six vendors there that night. They're like, "Oh, do we have to pay anything?" I'm like, "Dude, it's a charity meet. Why would I make you pay?" Right <laughs> for a charity meet. <laughs> for a charity yeah. meet. Right, and they all loved it. They all enjoyed it. Yeah. Right. So that was a very big accomplishment for me. Where, where was it held? That it was at DBA, was it not? Close. Yeah, in that complex. Yeah. All right. It was with Danny's Cafe yeah. at Silverwater. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Um, if my dad ends up watching this, the reason that I, I want to do another one, right, is another fundraiser event, is because that was the first meet of mine, of his son, his only son, right, that he had attended, right, yeah. the first one, first of many. Um, he attended the last one too. And all I remember from 
like, when you're running something, it's very chaotic, right? Yeah. The noise around you, everything going on. Yeah. All I heard was, mm. did you really do all this yourself? <laughs> right? And that was like in shock and disbelief, but that was happiness and proud. Yeah. Like, he yeah. was proud of his son for doing that. So I'm like, yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> right? But I had a great team behind me on the day, right? To help run the store, any incidents that happened, I had my best friend there, my go-to um, by my side. All right, so anything I had to get resolved, any issues, all right, we've got that fixed. All right, so let's go. Th- let's go to media. All right, talking about um, what's hard, what do you need to know? All right, when organising events, mm-hmm. just communicate with people. All right, <laughs> that's what we're doing, man. All right. <clears throat> I think I've lost count of how many different photographers and videographers I've had in my meets now. <laughs> but look at the work that they produce. How great is it? Oh, yeah. bro. All right. Um, one that I use that I'm like with quite frequently, which is where I met you guys. We partnered together for our first meet together. Mm-hmm. Six Speed Shutter. Yep. His work is incredible. Mm-hmm. Clubs in AU, they're brilliant. Did you guys see the video that Kazuna Group? Uh, put out for that last meet oh yeah I did I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about yeah, yeah. Right. yep that was amazing yeah that was like next level yep right. the and different that, shots like the angles and the way everything yeah, cutting when the car everything because in a group their work is incredible their next level um, this also goes back to when you're partnering with different brands different groups right in different fields of the car industry detailing fabrications whatever it is Right, and they want to partner up with you, but they've got other partners as well. And they ask you, oh, are you guys all right because there's no clash or anything? No, it doesn't need to be a clash. Right? We've all got great ideas from different aspects. I could never make the videos that Kazuna did for me that day. All right? That was incredible. All right? And I, I talk about that video every chance I get with pride. And I'm not trying to lift my brand. I'm trying to help them all right? and vice versa. They didn't need to make that video, but they did, mm. right? And it's nuts. And it is nuts. And you know what? You say something really good that we spoke about just before is the quality and the ability to create. So I, I know some people have a natural gift and a natural affinity to that stuff, and that's why they do it. I'm not a videographer and I can't Same. make this stuff. I know the bare basics and stitching a video together. I understand that you can put in sound clips and sound bites and do yeah. all this type of stuff, but I just, I don't have the brain capacity, the mental constitution to be able to put that together mm-hmm. and create something so phenomenal, whether it's an hour or five seconds. Yeah. I don't have it. And I tip my hat off to those people. So fucking mad props to them. Seriously. Yeah. Another mad props in that field of videography. Mato Club. Mato Club's who we, I did, point zero did the first meet with in collab at Benzins Cafe last August. Mm-hmm. If you see some of the work that they produce, it is proper cinematic and wow. All right. Um, Hot Import Nights, where you guys were last year, all right. October, wasn't it? October, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. White Bay Reserve? White, yeah, White, White Bay Terminal. Terminal. Yeah. Terminal. The one by yeah. the waters. Yeah. yeah. I won't lie, every single time I went to tag it on Instagram, I forgot the name every <laughs> single time and I just ended up going Sydney. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't work it out. I was yeah. like, oh, it's not coming up. <laughs> but the work that they do, right, is incredible. They're lifting their brand up as well. Yeah. Right? We're lifting our brand up. Yeah. Right? We're one big family. All right? There's no, just because we did one meet doesn't mean that we need to do every meet together. Mm. Right? doesn't mean that we need to do every second meeting. Like, we support each other, right? And we don't even have to... I don't, Point Zero doesn't have to have the name Point Zero to help Mado. It can be as Ken helping Mado and vice versa. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Um, just the brands really need to get out there and help each other out. Big time. All right? Let's talk about... When talk, still talking about the... Um, what's hard with... Making events. Part three of your question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, apart from quality control, right, it's also ensuring safety, right, um, and no hurting. Yeah. You can't control everybody there. No. Nah. Right? You can't. Like, let's be real. What you do do, right, is you make sure that you have security. You make sure you have CCTV footage. Right, because at the end of the day, you're trying to ensure that you run a great event, not just for yourselves because you want to stay out of trouble, for everyone there to actually enjoy themselves. That's right. All right, and leave saying, "Well, that's an event. That's a meet. That's an event to remember." Yep, hundred percent. Right? 
I couldn't have had an acai truck at the last meet if I couldn't ensure that the people that come to my meets already right, went on their best behaviour like they always are. Right? I couldn't ensure to midnight JDM car import that nothing was going to happen unless I knew the type of people that already come. Mm. Right? You're going to get those odd P-platers. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get the odd rev heads. Mm. Right? How you reinforce the message of no hooning is the most important part. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And how you control that. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Stop doing it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, do whatever you want on a private road, your own road outside the event. You Basically, clearly yeah. do it anyway. Why do you need to do it in this event? No yeah. one gives a fuck. <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> no, that's correct. And I guarantee you it doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the things that aren't legally allowed to drive on the road. So... <laughs> yeah. Four bangers <laughs> lift to the big boys. <laughs> yeah. It's you don't need that attention. No, you don't, no. not saying your car is shit, but nobody cares. Just exactly. you don't have to make attention for yourself just because your car is not the best. Thing. Exactly. Drive home safe. Drive to the event safe, and enjoy the vibe, the community that is yeah. at the event. Exactly right. I'm not going to hammer on this point, but this is why we've actually brought up before on this potty. Go to the track. Like yeah. everything, go to track yeah. school, go to the track on a Tuesday night. It, they've upped it by ten dollars, which I'm going to have a word to know about. <laughs> um, <laughs> mother, motherfuckers, love you, Drum uh, Eastern Creek. Thank you. Um, but it, it's like you know, whatever you can save up and go once a month. Trust yeah. me, you do that, it's out of your system. Like yep. I guarantee you, for two weeks at least minimum, you're sorted. Like you don't, you don't need the pops and cracks and bangs and all that type of stuff anymore. I promise you, you're going to be fine. <laughs> Like, again, do it in your own private time. Like, it's it's fine. Like, your car's, it's not like your car's not sick. It's just like, fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to make something for everyone for here. For everyone here, yeah. Yeah. Just hold on to yourself. Hold on to it. Yeah. It's that urge, right? Just it like, is. <sighs> Leave it at home. Leave it at home. Yeah. I'm it's like, just on the weekend, I won't say this weekend, the last weekend or the weekend before, but. A weekend. A weekend. I was eager to go to an event. So I missed the morning one. Something happened at home. So I missed the morning one. I was ready to go to the one in the afternoon. Mm. Then again, something sorry, popped sorry. up again. Is this the same event organizer or like two different events that you wanted to go to on the same day? Two different ones. Two okay. different ones. So I was like, I missed the one I want to go in the morning. Let's go to one in the afternoon. Shit popped up again. So I couldn't make it to that. But as soon as I heard what happened with mm. some people there at that night, just because they couldn't hold themselves, maintain their behaviors in their fucking cars behind the wheels on the throttle... And the shit that happened at that event, I'm like, because of that, I ain't fucking going to that event ever again. No. <laughs> no. And there's some people that just ruin it for the club. It wasn't even the club, yeah. but people ruin it because you don't want to be part of that. No. no. You've heard it from the fucking Shaolin master here, right? <laughs> 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 Ooh, that it's, was it's heated. Not just, oh, I heard, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry for the people that were involved yeah. or were caused or affected by affected what by happened. It. It's like, nah, I'm not risking it. No. Why would you? And don't risk it for a club like that because it's like it's given me that opinion on a club, but that's that mentality. It's ruined it for that club. Exactly There's people right. like that that's ruined it for that club, that group, business, whatever. But yeah. don't because yeah. you just did to a couple of us. <laughs> so scenes change. That's the other topic we want to talk about. What <laughs> the we, scene we changing. Scenes change. Scenes changing. What a segue. <laughs> <laughs> scenes changed. Oh, actually, sorry, before we get into that, I just wanted to say, like, we will continue to support you and continue bringing sick cars to your events. Thank I know you're looking at taking a bit of a step, step side step. Opportunities yeah. no, are here. Welcome. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like the phrase "back step." I don't. I don't like it. You just you're taking a side step yeah. to go help others. Yeah. It's not like you're leaving this high and dry. You you you're making something amazing. You just want to. Put your it's time just in a different route. Power. Yeah, it's on your yeah. stepping away. It's just a different route, and it's funny because it's an open like, oh, I've been doing this for years, or I'm gonna help the others. No, it's I'm still new to this too, but this is what I can bring. This is what I've brought to the table already. Whatever help you guys need to get to this level, let's do it together. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm on a mission to try and make a track car a show car. Um, in the in the sense that it, it's proof of concept that it can be done. Is this the one you were telling me about last time? The MX-5. Yeah. That MX-5 that I brought to that meet was the day we got it. <laughs> okay. So that day yeah. when, and then you go to that meet, that P-1000 
picture of its stock, yeah. which I'm going to use the before and after shot, it, that was it. Yeah. We had it that day. That's why it would looked horrendous. It had those weird ass OEM wheels on it. Yeah. it. It was like in bits. Now it's different. Now it's completely different and it will be continued to be different, yeah. but that was your event. Yeah. That yeah. first one where I Thank met you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Connections linked. I have a question for you guys. What enhanced you guys? What encouraged you guys to come to that meet? You personally invited us. Uh, apart, no. from, <laughs> apart from that, right? This is so. This is a question that people behind the people yeah, yeah. watching might ask: How do we get other brands to come to our meets? Apart from just asking them, mm. right? What would motivate other clubs, other brands, other businesses to attend one of our meets? So, is that the question, or do you yeah. want to ask what we were doing? No, oh, that's my question to you guys. Right? Yeah. One, why did you take that chance with me, and yeah. why would a brand like you guys? Like, a community and everything come to a brand like us. Well, I'll answer that real easy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. What? Tom got the message. I got the message. That's one thing that stood out to us. Like a club, a business, whether you're one month old, one year old, 10 year old, I don't care who the fuck you are. Yeah. You personally took time out of your day, wrote a message. Individually. Individually. Addressed us individually. Not like, hey, mate. It's like, hey, Tony, on my own car account. It's like, okay, this guy's done his research. He's going through my couple of accounts, found my name. Did the same with Tom, did the same with Liam. Yep. Message was there. Second rule from Mars Car Culture Australia, we're like, we want to go to everything. We want to be part of every. We don't want just to hold our own event. We don't want to just do the podcast, our interviews. We want to be fucking everywhere. We want to know you, meet the owners, meet the people there. Yeah. It's just a big option to meet new people, make friends. It could be a car that I'm on the track with next. And that was the reason why. We went out and that was just to get there. Don't talk about our feedback and how good it was there. That was just from our taking our step to being out there. To give you the breakdown, like because you did in message us individually, we have obviously a work group chat. Of so we, we all speak and even if we do personally get invited to something that no one else did, like Liam, Liam's got a SIG R32, right? It's gorgeous. actually the car that's right behind you on our <laughs> yeah. podcast. He's Liam's car and Liam will be on the podcast one day and we'll, um, busy man. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll make it a big deal, but, yep. um, like, he, you know, he gets invited to sick things, but he then shares it within our group because he understands that like, this might be a good idea for us to be at for business reasons or for whatever other reason. Maybe it's just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Purely and simply like five times out of 10, it's just for fun. <laughs> because our group, we've so, got, a mix of cars. Yeah. yeah. Aussie, Euro, JDM, this aspect of the JM, that aspect. It's yeah. like when there's something on, our whole group pretty much gets involved. So it's yeah. someone says this, it's like, oh shit, I got that as well. Or like, go check your request box. Yeah, yeah it's of in course. There. So talking about the mental state or like what's actually happening is like, imagine that that is happening with other car clubs and groups. Generally, the owners, if not everyone who's involved in that group will be speaking and messaging about each other and working out whether yeah. or not they're going, um, which is exactly what we did. Yeah. And it just so happened to align. I can't even remember what we were doing that weekend, but I feel like we did something that Saturday too. And the Sunday, I'll never forget, bro, it was fucking hot. <laughs> it was hot that day. But without a, like, without a shadow of a doubt, I was just involved because I had a new car. <laughs> we, we picked up your car the afternoon before that event. Yeah. So that, that was it. That was, and we're like, okay, well, we need to know if it runs. So yeah. we're like, the only one way to find that out is to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> now keep in mind, that was like, what, an hour and a bit for you guys to travel to? Yeah. From out, from out here, from where we are now, shooting? Yep. 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 So, uh, around Eastern Creek. Yeah. That park. Yeah. And the car ha had like, it was completely like the wheel alignment was fucked. There was wheel <laughs> weights missing on the wheel. If I went over 90 kilometers, like I had the full mad shakes, yeah. like <laughs> it was bad. We, so that's why we, we additionally went. So we found out a lot of stuff yeah. by going to that event. You essentially kickstarted <laughs> what would be the MX-5 series known as Built From Scratch. Coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> uh, and that's how it kicked off. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey Social, for having us that day too. Thank you. Yes. It's really hot. That was a life saving <laughs> ice caramel latte. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I drank as many liters of water that day as any other day. Oh, no. bro. Speaking of like drinking liters of water, this, I don't know if you've got this. Do you drink coffee? Here and there now. 
now. Oh, fuck, dude. Here I used to be hooked. hooked. You got to speak to this dude. He will have about three before it's 8 a.m. <laughs> and then we're at like a Krispy Kreme cruise or whatever, just going out to KK's, just down yeah. at Mascot, just for a bit of fun. It's 8 p.m. at night. This man's having a fucking cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice latte or whatever. And I'm just like, dude, you've got to stop. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> Be careful on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to stay away. The mister told me the whole rundown of what caffeine does to you and then how it fucks up your sleep and do how you, you wanna, recover. Do you want to know a story? Yes. Okay. When I was in my gym head stage before I started Point Zero Garage, yep. right, my mornings consisted of the morning fat burning shake, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Metamucil fiber, mm-hmm. apple cider vinegar, oh. yeah, <laughs> lemon juice. All right. And when they say do one to two scoops of pre-workout, Please don't go overboard like I did. Oh, bro. Right. It was three, three and a half. Right. Bro, you were being in the toilet like every hour. I was in the beginning. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> um, nah, but I was buzzing, right? And it was, I always thought of it as, oh, it's going to suppress your appetite. Right. Yep. So I'd go to work, right? Have that shake, finish that shake, straight into the long blacks. Oh. All right. Yeah. Didn't have my first meal to the, of the day till about 1 2 o'clock. In the oh, afternoon. Oh, man. Right. Finish work, go home, back again to the gym. All right. Another two scoops of pre-workout. So I'm averaging five scoops, five and a half scoops of pre-workout every day. That's fucked. All right. How many grams of caffeine are you having per day? <sighs> Good luck, man. Good luck. We're yeah, asking that now. One Good. scoop's like a one and a half coffees, isn't it? Pretty much. One and a half to two. Yeah, pretty much. Per scoop. Yeah. Bro. <sighs> So uh, that, that's up to you with your Red Bull challenge. <laughs> <laughs> How many Red Bulls were we talking? Uh, that night. <laughs> uh, I, won't, I kind of said on the potty before, so I won't bore everyone okay. to death with it again. But like I essentially, I just drank way too many. I yeah. was young and dumb. Yeah. 18. Shaw Club was awesome and manly on Sundays. It was like my second home. I love Deep House. I was a bit of a feral. Um, <laughs> I still am. But back then I did it and it was just the dumbest thing. And I didn't put two and two together. I was just out having a good time drinking, trying to get with girls. Like I just wanted, that was it. So it was the next morning that fucked me up and I, bro, I legit, I was like, I need to go to hospital. Mm. Like someone called me an ambulance and I was just, I was f- going to have a heart attack at any moment. Yeah. Like eight vodka Red Bulls. Like, I don't think I'm as crazy as that. I mean, I'm bad with coffee, but not as bad as you two then. <laughs> <laughs> I've never touched an injury. I had since. kidney pains and stuff and I was put in hospital for that because of all that caffeine. <sighs> yeah. And no. this is why we moved out of that side of um, the whole ambassadors and modeling and everything side of things. Yeah. Right, we've gone into cars full, like completely. Yep. Yep. Don't get me wrong. I'm still a fan of it. I'm, I'm known A good to coffee be... start of the day is perfect. Yeah. yeah. A good in Sunday moderation. morning coffee and cars. You no can't better way. Wrong. You no can't better way. So much so that apparently my signature pose in the morning is this. Like, because <laughs> I always just have a coffee in the morning. Yeah. Or so, so my friend Chris tells me. <laughs> 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 but anyway... Mo- moving on, we were we were we were segueing yeah, yeah. into the changing face of cars today. Did, yes. Did you want to raise anything? Where have the muscle cars gone? What man, man of muscle right here? Where have the muscle cars gone? As in like the classic muscle, the classic muscles. Where's the car beast gone? <laughs> oh, I think it's a different scene. I think with like the era and now it's. Each car group is very to themselves. Yeah. There's not that many where every car gets involved. It's mm. like, because people don't feel included, I think. Yeah. You have one that come in, they're not included into the JDM. A muscle doesn't get included in the JDM. So the JDM's are very JDM. Exactly. But that's if you say JDM in general. But then if you go in depth, it's like the Skyline stick with the Skyline. The Sylvia's, <laughs> oh, with the skill with yours. It's, it's very like, I'm on to my own group. I'm only to my family kind of thing. Yeah, fair. That's the way I think I see it. I'd agree with that wholeheartedly. So much so that I feel like it got so bad to a degree where, like, I'll pick on JDM, for example. We love it. We fucking love our JDM. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Clearly, we own it all. Like, (laughs) it's... it's, I was like, fuck, I just say JDM. But... Simple. I feel like it started with, like, what you said. It's like... The Skyline's sticking with the Skyline's. Broader speaking, the JDM just want to stick with JDM. So then scenes are just made with Japanese writing and then it's all about JDM. So then that dis... 
like includes BMW. And because BMW isn't involved, that means Volkswagen and Audi and everyone else is not allowed to yep. come in. And then they start separating even further by district. To the point, though, where even the P-plate drivers are, who drive their little old BMWs are like, well, I'm not going to go hang out with, like, a JDM crew. That's fucking weird. And I'm like, we're missing the point. Yeah. We're really missing the point here. Like, this is not how it used to be. And then another all. new group starts just for the P-plate Euros. Another group starts just for another club. And then yeah. it's like, there's just each individual little groups here and there. And then that's where that, when they go to a big event, they're in that same little circle again. Yeah. Exactly right. Because yep. it's a comfort zone. Yep. Right. Let I me put it. to you this way. I've said this before very graciously about the V8 community, but I'm going to pick on Holden, and Ford is part of this, but I'm going to pick on Holden. They're known. You may see so many Holdens always together, right? So many commie groups, so many like VL, so many like SS Owners Club and all that type of stuff but they're not trying to disassociate themselves with everyone else. There's just so many of them. Yeah. Like, It's like the it, people that own those cars are the ones willing to go hang out. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and all miraculously, it's just all Holdens together. Yeah, <laughs> and we've said this before. It's like you tell a Holden person that an event's on. Let, let's say, for example, the first time we met you, if you told a whole bunch of Holden people yeah. two hours prior that's when you invited them. I guarantee you every single, if not nine out of 10 would have shown up because they're like little animals. They just want to fucking <laughs> yeah. go to everything, bro. Menaces behind the wheel. <laughs> they just love it. Like, and I don't know why that doesn't seem to be so tr like a shared collaborated thought across everywhere else. I don't know why it's weird. Um, there's cops going for the commies right now. <laughs> like, do you, do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, do you, do you, would you agree with that? 100%. It is. And I can attest to that actually even further because I'll use Holden again. Like, you've got SS Owners Club and all this type of stuff. But, yeah, when you go to the Endless East meet or you go to Midnight Club, do you know who Midnight Club are here in Sydney yet? Midnight, no. Obviously, they're trying to take the, the full reins of the old Midnight Club in Japan. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's obviously not the Midnight Club as much as I'm sure they would love to be. <laughs> Shout out! Um, like, is it is it actually Midnight Club? It's yeah, actually Midnight, Midnight Club. Club. It's a okay. private group that's on Facebook, and it's filled with tons of different cars. Like loads of people who you just wouldn't know fully into the car scene. Yeah. Yeah. Not saying it's underground, although I'm sure they would love to have put it that way. Yeah. But the guy who runs it, Steve, completely like obscure, lovely guy. But the people who he invites is such a mad collaborative bunch of people. There's so many Holdens from SS Owners Club in there. Yeah, okay. How does that work? And they're more than willing to, and we do, we all go, do, we go away on weekends away with this, with this group and club. Like it's fully organised. We go to Bathurst track days. Like we stay the night there. It's fully organised. The crews, like the meetup, everything. Like it's there, it's happening and it's a full legit thing. And we're talking like Audis, like we're talking old school, as much as I don't want to say, like convertible Jags. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking like loads of different cars. That's mind blowing to yeah. me. Like what? We'll introduce you to him, bro. Like it'll blow your mind because you, you'll, we'll get you in the group and you'll be like, how the fridge is there like thousands of people in here, but no one talks about it because yeah. no one talks about Midnight Club. It is. <laughs> it is. It's really like when you see their events, mm. people just know when you rock up and then it's like the amount of cars that rock up is, I don't think I saw any of these cars at the previous fucking event. Where did these yeah, cars okay. come from and how did these cars yeah. hear of it? Yeah. yeah. You're like, what? Cars you've yeah. never seen at the show and shines. Cars you've never yeah. seen and they're like done up to the nine. And you're like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you existed in Sydney? <laughs> it's all mysterious. I love it. I, I love it. We'll introduce you to him. But... Yeah. Does that make sense though, what I'm saying about the, like the scene, like I suppose in, in like, it, it feels so much like people are willing to push it away, but then they have no idea why they're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. I call it sheep mentality. <laughs> Do you farmer? <laughs> <laughs> you just followed. So they're yeah. sheep, they just follow what yeah. the other person did because they said it. So they go around in circles over and over and over again. Do you think it's also 
this newly made culture. You know? I think it is. It yeah. is just, it's different to what it used to be like. Yeah. Who did it? Who are you? I'm coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Continuing on from the podcast being too long. For this episode, we've decided that we'll cut it into two parts. Being it was, what, a solid two hours, so we'll test it out. Mate, it was something like two and a half hours just because we love talking to Ken so much. It was good. <laughs> it was heaps. Like, we didn't barely go through anything. Time um, flew by just like that. We thought we'd just appreciate it that you guys would like it split it up in two parts. So one each, uh, one part, one hour. Yeah. We'll split it up. So in saying that, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you want to follow us, um, you can subscribe to this podcast anywhere and everywhere, be it Spotify, be it iTunes, be it SoundCloud, be it YouTube. You get the idea. Please like, share, subscribe. I love all the feedback, guys. I do get pinged about it now, and I appreciate it. I'll start throwing in some more audio segments and some more questions for you guys because you guys are actually asking some pretty dope questions. Um, and if you want to follow Car Culture Australia, you can literally type it in anywhere now. I'm pretty sure we're at the top ranking thing in Google now. When you everything, <laughs> Google, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, everything. Uh, you don't even have to worry about the dots and the ampersands and all the bullshit. Like Car we just Culture come up. Australia now. We're on SEO stuff. Yeah, baby. <laughs> um, add into that from the vet we're talking about in. In this episode, our May Sunrise Sprint, that in collaboration with Royal Dynasty, Facebook event is now live, so go check that out. Exact details will announce closer to the date. Otherwise, let's That's wrap it. it up. Sweet. Sweet. Wait for part two, guys. Thank you. <laughs>